All right, ladies and gentlemen of the year two citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash, that you're in front of. <laughs> back at it with another throwback tunes on another Thursday, and I am reviewing The Recession by Young Jeezy. Yes. So this is his third studio album. Now, yes, this is my second Jeezy album that I'm reviewing, and I did decided to review this one over let's get it thug motivation one-on-one because at the current compared to the recession actually had better tracks on that one than thug motivation and the recession continues Jeezy's uh momentum especially in the club scene especially in detroit so there you go with that let's get on with this so this joint came out september 2nd 2008 by corporate thugs with a z corporate thugs entertainment cte and dev jam recording and this joint oh wow this is a shocker it didn't say when this album was recorded so i'm assuming it started late 2007 and finished up somewhere in the middle of 2008 that's what i'm guessing i'm not sure but let's look at the producers involved we got drummer boy midnight black dj Payne one that's a new one dj top don cannon fat boy another new one justice league shoddy red street market music another new one the biz I don't recall reading that producer name before. The Incredibles with a K, not a C. Again, another new um, producer or a bunch of producers that I never read before. T.A., Crown Kings Productions, DJ Squeaky? Yeah, he, this one definitely new. And D. Witch. All right. So, let's take a look at the chart. So, this album was number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 and on the top rb slash hip-hop albums charts and it was number six on the canadian album charts as well and it was also number one on the top rap albums charts and the album was certified gold so in terms of certifications not exactly his best word his first album was his best in terms of certifications but this one i would probably say was better in the charts because while thug motivation 102 the inspiration was number one on Three out of the four charts that I named outside of the Canadian one, it didn't make the Canadian chart. This one did, and it was number one on those same three charts as well. So, charts ride, this is Jeezy's best work, if you can believe that or not. Alright, so let's take a look at the track. So there's a grand total of I'm about to say the wrong thing. 18 tracks, unless you got the iTunes ver version, excuse me, where there's two more versions, uh, two more tracks to that uh album. But we're gonna focus on the original joint. So the first track is called the recession intro. And the word intro is in parentheses. This is an actual song. Like the first 28 seconds is a skit, but the rest of it is actually a song. So this is a song. Next up is Welcome Back, followed by By the Ray. Next up is Crazy World, which is one of the five, you heard me right, five singles from this album. The next single is called What They Want. <clears throat> oh my god, excuse me. Followed by Amazing without the G, but with the apostrophe at the end. Then we got Hustlers with an A Z at the end, not E R S. But Hustlers and Ambition, excuse me. Then we got Who That. Some of you should no, still recognize that track. And that, that, D A T, not T H A T. Track number nine is called Don't You Know. And that's another single, by the way. Uh, that Who That track. Track number nine is called Don't You Know, followed by Circulate. Then we got Wordplay. Next up is Vacation, which is another single, followed by Everything. And finally, we get some cameos featuring, uh, well, features, rather. Anthony Hamilton and Lil Boozy. Then we got Taking It there, and that's Taken without the G, but with the possibly. Taking It there featuring Trey songs. Track number 15 is called Don't Do It, followed by another track y'all should know about, Put On, featuring Kanye West, another single. Then we got track number 17, which is called Get A Lot, A L L O T, or is that how I pronounce it? I don't know. And then the last track off the album is My President, featuring Nas, which is another single off of this album. Now the iTunes bonus track, now I did not know, I was not aware of this, but there is a put on remix featuring Jay-Z, and which was funny because I was in Canada a month ago and they had this playing on the radio. I was like, what? Okay. And then try number 10, 20, excuse me, called Done It. All right, but again, we only go focus on the top 18, not those other two. Now let's look at the first single off this album, which is Put On. So this joint came out June 3rd, 2008, featuring Kanye West. So check this out the song received a grammy nomination for best rap performed by a duo or a group and again this is a grammy nomination and this had to be in either 2008 or 2009 that's what i'm guessing 
I'm not 100 percent sure when they got that nomination, but yeah, actually, you know what? I think it was 2008. But moving on, this song they did perform this song at the 2008 BET Awards. There's a music video for this as well with a cameo from Amber Rose, and yeah, that's it. And there's again remixes and freestyles. So again, there's an official remix featuring Jay Z that was released July 29th, 2008. And here we go. Jay-Z tried the auto-tune for the phase I put on before his verse for a short time and didn't use the effect after that and said, well, saying, I don't need no T-Pain. That was the quote right there that he used. Now, there was a freestyle over the production, which was recorded by Ludacris for his mixtape, The Preview, in which he references the artists in the original song and Lil Wayne selling one million copies of the Carter 3 in a week. Lil Wayne, speaking of which, also recorded a freestyle for his mixtape, Dedication 3, featuring his Young Money recording artists, Tiger and Gutter Gutter. Another remix was made by Trey The Truth with one of his mixtapes. Other artists to freestyle over the beat includes Rick Ross, Ace Hood, and Plies, Riley, and The Drink. The Drink? That's an R&B singer, but okay, whatever. <laughs> now let's take a look at the chart. So this track, or uh, this single rather, was 46 in the Canadian album, uh, was uh, 46 in Canada, 12 in the US Billboard Hot 100, number three on the US Hot RB slash Hip Hop songs, and number one in the US Hot Rap Songs charts. And the single was double platinum. The single alone selling two million copies. All right, so let's look at the next single, which is called Vacation. So this joint came out August 12, 2008, six days before my birthday. And check this out. So the song was released on the same day, but on USDA Today, the number two, dot com. So that's USDA, then the number two, then D-A-Y dot com as a countdown to the album recession. Now, here's a little bit of interesting news. Originally, Crazy World was rumored to be the second single, but it was confirmed that Vacation would be the second single. He said that he chose Vacation as a single because, and I quote, I need one. No one ever seen Jeezy have fun. There you go. And it, there's the music video for this, which was shot in Miami. And we got cameos from Rick Ross and Triple C's, Blood Raw, Slick Cooler, Slim Thug, Trey Songs, and more. So, yeah, there you go with that. And the video version premiered on August 27, 2008 on BET. Now, let's take a look at the charts. It was 56 on the U.S. Billboard Hot R&B slash Hip Hop Songs charts. 16th on the U.S. Billboard Hot R uh, Rap Track, excuse me, and 30th on the U.S. Billboard Mainstream R&B Slash Hip Hop. Uh, I think that's a new chart, but I could be wrong with that. Let's move on to the third single of this album, which is ironic because, oh wait, no, I take that back. This is okay. This is weird. Here's why this is weird. Uh, the third single is it, it, it was actually Crazy World. So the song was performed by Jeezy at the BET Hip Hop Awards in 2008, but the song, the single itself was not released until May 26, 2009. That's why this was weird. And let's see. And here's the interesting thing. So the, in the song, Young Jeezy talks about the recess that America was going for at the time and how he thinks President George W. Bush is punishing America and this song also talked about the late 2000s recession. Uh, they just said the same thing twice, basically. Now, it turns, and there is a music video for this as well. And here's an interesting thing. Young Jeezy said that he was going to make videos for all of his songs. I'm not sure if he meant singles or like every single song off of this album. And this one, well, yeah, he got, yeah, now that I read on about it, uh, yeah, he was talking about singles. And this one would be the third one. But then in parentheses, uh, it said that it was now, it has now been replaced by my president as the third single. And there you go with that. And there's a remix for this one, which is the Crazy World in parentheses, the Oakland Shooting Incident remix. So this is DJ Green Lantern featuring Avery Storm and Uncle Mother. And there's a second remix that features Tony Yayo, Rock City, and Ace Hood. And this song did make the charts. It was 66 on the U.S. Billboard Hot R&B slash Hip Hop Songs charts and 37 on the U.S. Billboard, uh, Billboard Mainstream R&B slash Hip Hop charts. Now, speaking of my president, that's the fourth official single from this album. And, of course, it features Nas. And this joint came out 
November 20, uh, November 15, 2008, excuse me. But here's the interesting thing. The song was recorded on June 3rd, 2008 from 2.04 a.m. to 2.09 a.m. So I'm like, what? They recorded this song in five minutes? Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, now here's a little bit of interesting fact behind this song. The song was number 16 on Rolling Stone's list of the 100 best songs of 2008. And Jeezy and Nas recorded the song on the day Barack Obama clinched the, Demo uh, the Democratic nomination for the presidency. And here, here's a little bit of interesting news as well. My president also is notable for the unification, uh, the unified collaboration between these two, Jeezy and Nas, who have been, who have been having a feud since the 2006 release of Nas' album, Hip Hop Is Dead, which contained statements to which Young Jeezy took offense to. So, there you go with that. Now, there's a music video for this as well. And basically, it features many support, supporters excuse me, of Barack Obama holding place cards with various names written on them, including Mother Teresa, The Jonah Truth, Vermeer Topi, I probably gonna butcher some of these names, so I apologize in advance. Sally Barisha, Bernie Mac, Sebastian Edwards, Tupac Secure, The Notorious B.I.G., Nas, Bun B, Joel Santana, William Shakespeare, The Game, Lil Boozy, J uh, Jam Master J, Trick Daddy, David Banner, Akon, Jermaine Dupree, where I have no clue, Pimp C, and Soldier C. Other place card names, famous world famous figures like Mahatma Gahi and Che Guevara. The place cards are meant to evoke those held by delegations, delegations excuse me, at national political conventions. However, parts elected to also include the neighborhoods like Queenbridge and countries like Haiti, Haiti, excuse me, Israel and Iraq. The Israel place cards cause offense to many Pal ooh, Palestinians, including DJ Khaled and Muslims because of the 2008-2009 Gaza war. War, excuse me. <clears throat> and there you go with that. And of course, we can't forget the, the infamous line, my president is black, my Lambo is blue, said by Jesus in this album as well. And he actually brought his Lamborghini, oh, I'm gonna butcher this name, Musilago in the music video as well. And there is a music video for this as well. I mean a music video, but a remix, excuse me. The remix features uh, Jay-Z, which was leaked on the internet January 29, 2009. It was mentioned by Jay-Z, who performed his first live with Jay-Z on January 19, 2009 at 2 15 a.m. at Love Nightclub in Washington, D.C. And Jay-Z's verse of the remix was released on the next day, January 20th. And let's see, here's interesting. Uh, President Obama's inauguration it was called the D.C. Mix, which is interesting. And let's see, Jeezy's new verse of the remix is a diss to Bill O'Reilly as well. And there's a lot of info in this joint right here. So this is the second song off the album that had a remix with Jay-Z. The first option we're putting on the first thing I just talked about, and I, you know, I mentioned that earlier. The remix is included in the deluxe This is a Jay-Z's compilation album, Jay-Z The Hits Collection Volume 1. Now let's take a look at the charts finally. This song was 53rd on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, 45th on the U.S. Billboard Hot RB slash Hip Hop Song Charts, and 13th on the U.S. Billboard Hot Rap Tracks Charts. Now let's move on to the last single off this album, which is called Who That? And this joint came out December 17, 2008. And there's a music video for this, obviously. And I do remember seeing this music video. And it's unlike a normal Young Jeezy video due to most of it being shot from a green screen. It also features a female dance crew in a colorful and colorful background, excuse me, and cameos made by DJ Khaled, Rick Ross, Ace Hood, Gorilla Zoe, Buster Rhymes, uh, Slip Star, BG, Young Buck, Young Noble, EDI, Mean, is, is that, wait a minute, EDI Mean, there we go, Akon, Jadakiss, DJ Crazy Tune, never heard of him before, Ice Cube, WC, Ice Cube's son, Doughboy, Fabulous, and Rocco. And this joint did make the chart, just one, U.S. Billboard Hot RB slash Hip Hop Songs chart. All right, so let me give you guys my favorite tracks about this album from worst to first. And some of you may be offended by this, but My President is the worst song about this album. Now, Nas is on this track right here. So the lyricism is obviously dope. 
I never considered Jeezy to be like a top tier lyricist, but you know, it was good enough where you can he can make everybody nod their head and you know get hyped and stuff. So I'm focused on the beats here. The melody is bland, the tempo is cool, the bass is straight, the kick is really cool, the snare is straight, overall the track is just straight. It's not bad, it's not terrible, it's just straight. Uh circulate the next what's the album, track off this album. The melody slash sample is really cool, but here's the problem. It sounds like if you like if this like if you're not really a music head, if you're not really don't have a producer's ear or a beat maker ear, you would think he just took the sample rap over and that's it. Because nothing was added to the tempo aside from a more banging kick and the tempo was increased. And that was it. But if you were listening to this rap me telling you that, you would think that he just took a sample and just rapped over it. That's it. And, and that's mostly not the case. I mean, no, that's to some degree not the case. <laughs> And there's so much potential here because that sample was cool. But I just got to say the track is straight. Crazy World, the melody slash sample is really cool. Tempo is cool. Needy bass, though. The kick is really cool. Snare is just straight up all the track is cool. Wordplay, the sample is cool. Seagull used this, so of course I liked it. The tempo is really cool. The bass is cool. Kick is cool. Snare is cool. Percussions are cool. The track is cool. Vacation, the melody slash sample is cool. The tempo is cool as is the bass, the end of the kick, and the snare, and basically the track. The track is cool. Everything. The melody slash tempo is really cool. The tempo is cool, same with the bass and the kick, and the claps. And this is the song with Anthony Hamilton in it, and he does not fit with this track at all. But the percussions are cool, and, and the track is still cool nevertheless. Don't you know? The melody is cool, same with the tempo and the bass, but needs more of it. The kick is really cool, same with the snare, but the track is still just cool nevertheless. Take it in there. The melody is cool. Same with the tempo and the drum pattern and the bass, but needs more of it. Kick is cool. Snare is really cool. And the track is cool nevertheless. Don't do it. The sample here is excellent. And I know what that sample is. And I really like that sample. I really like that song, really. The tempo is cool, but should be faster. The bass is really cool. The kick is cool. The snare is just straight. Should have used a different snare. There's a lot of potential here because of the bass and really because of that sample. But overall, the track is just cool. Hustler's Ambition. The melody is cool, but the hook portion sounds like a lighter version, not by pitch, but just a lighter version of Amazing. Tempo is cool, but could be faster. The bass is cool, but needs more of it. The kick is really cool. The clap slash snare combo is cool. Overall, the track is cool. Speaking of which, Amazing. Melanie is cool, tempo is cool but could be faster, the bass is cool, same with the kick, snare is really cool, overall the track is cool. What they want, the melody is cool, same with the tempo and the bass but needs more of the bass, kick is really cool, the snare is just cool, overall the track is just cool. And the sixth best track off this album is Get A Lot, Melanie is cool but a tad bit too much going on with the melody, tempo is cool but could be faster, the bass is really cool, same with the kick, the snare is just straight though and the track is really cool. All right. Their best track off this album is Welcome Back. This is a club classic right here. The tempo is cool. The drum pattern, even though it's really cool, and the drum pattern, the beats pattern throughout basically every single track off this album sounds the same. But let's move on. The melody is really cool. Bass is cool, but needs way more of it. The kick is really cool. The snare is just cool. Percussions are just cool, but the track is really cool nevertheless. Fourth best track off this album is By The Way. The melody slash sample is really cool. Same with the tempo, the bass is cool but needs more of it, the kick is really cool, same with the snare and the percussion and the clap and the hi-hats, the track is really cool. The best track off this album is Who That, a club classic right here. The melody is really cool, the tempo is cool, the drum pattern is really cool, the bass is straight, the bass gives me, the bass is straight but needs way more of it. The kick is really cool though, same with the snare, the claps are cool, the track is really cool. And this one's really tough because I really like these two tracks. But I went with this one. The Recession, the intro, is the second best track off this album. One of my all-time favorite Jeezy tracks right here. Like I said, the skit lasts for 28 seconds, then we get to the actual song. The melody slash tempo is really cool. The tempo's cool, but could be a bit faster. The bass is cool, but could be a bit more banging. The kick is really cool. Same with the snares, the claps are just cool. The track is really cool. And if you heard this song, you would think like, Evo about to win, all of a sudden, a hero arrives to try to save the day or whatever, which is, is, is funny. Cause that's what it got me thinking of every time I hear this track. And the number one track is put on. Come on now. This is a club classic. Detroit loves this track without question, especially in the clubs. One of my all-time favorite Gigi tracks. Uh, 
In terms of my all-time favorites, Jeezy track, in between this and Jeezy, which I reviewed from the Inspiration album last week, and uh, Black Dreams. Those, and then of course The Recession. Those four tracks are my all-time favorite Jeezy tracks. Who That is up there, and um, I love it. It's up there as well. But and who that's up there too. But those four put on Black Magic, Jeezy, and the Recession. Those four are my all-time favorite Jeezy tracks. I don't know which one the best out of those four. It, it's really tough to say. Uh, Jeezy got an edge. It's between. Oh, it's tough. Jeezy and Black Dream. Ooh, it, it's tough between those two. Put on is right there as well. But put on the best track off this album right here. Club Classic, like I said. One of my all-time favorite tracks, like I said. The melody is really cool. The tempo's cool, but could be faster. The bass is really cool. Same with the kick. The snare is cool, and overall the track is really cool. So yeah, put on the best track off this album, and arguably Jeezy's best track, in my opinion, if I do say so myself. All right, let me give you guys some professional ratings. Metacritic gave it a 72 out of 100. All Music gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Entertainment Weekly gave it a B+. LA Times gave it a one and a half out of four stars. Pitchfork Media gave it a 6.5 out of 10. Pop Matters gave it an eight out of 10. Robert Chris Gall gave it two stars. Rap Reviews gave it an 8.5 out of 10. Rolling Stone gave it a three out of five stars. The, oh, this is new. Tiny Mixtapes gave it a two out of five stars. And USA Today gave it three out of four stars. So what do I think about this album? All right. If I had to think about it, I have to say that Doug Motivation 102 The Inspiration is a better album because the first like seven or eight tracks off of that album were sick as heck, if I do say so myself. And that's not the case here. So looking at this, if I had to pick, if I had to give this album on uh, the recess of the rating, I'm gonna give it a three, ooh, well, no. Hmm. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. And I recommend you download it and you keep it. Okay, there's a lot of classes on here. Welcome back. It's a club classic. Who that? It's a club classic. Put on the club classic. The recession is a great track. By the way, is a great track as well. And there's a lot of tracks that are cool as well. So four out of five, I recommend you download it and you keep it. So I'm gonna call it a wrap. So with that said, y'all know who this is. This is your boy New Jack Aspie, aka the new Stephen A. Smith. Saying peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah.